President Trump changed decades of American foreign policy Wednesday, announcing that the United States would officially recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mr. Trump also says the U.S. is planning to move its embassy from Tel Aviv. Jeremy Ben-Ami is the president of J Street, a self-described pro-Israel, pro-peace nonprofit group that advocates for policies leading to a two-state solution. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Good to be here. So, Jeremy, when the administration first announced that it would declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel last week, you said on Twitter that President Trump was, quote, playing with fire. What did you mean? Well, the issue of Jerusalem is probably the single most sensitive topic in almost the entirety of the Middle East. Uh, there's a lot going on right now to cause the region to be aflame, but the status of Jerusalem is really the most sensitive to billions of people ac across the globe and across the region, not just in the immediate area. So by weighing in and taking a side in a conflict the U.S. is supposed to be mediating, uh, the president runs the risk of throwing a lighted match on a powder keg that's already uh, on the verge of explosion, as it is. I'm going to ask you to elaborate a little bit more, because what is the message that's being sent as you see it? Well, the, the message that's being sent is there's a dispute over who is controlling, who is sovereign over this sensitive territory. And for 70 years, the world has said that this is an area that the parties that are fighting over it need to come to an agreement to decide whose it is. It's not for any outside party. It's not for the parties unilaterally to decide. And today, after 70 years, uh, the President of the United States has weighed in on this topic uh, in a way that says that no longer necessary for the parties to agree. We're just going to say what we think. And, and we used to be the mediator uh, between these two parties. And it's very hard to maintain your role mediating uh, if you're going to take the side of one side to the dispute. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called this declaration, quote, an important step toward peace. What's your reaction to his statement? Well, it's, a, it's an oxymoron. I mean, it's, it's impossible for it to be a step toward peace when it's a step that's going to drive the other party away from the negotiations. The uh, Palestinians have withdrawn their representatives from Washington today. They've said that they no longer see the United States as a mediator. Uh, I, I just don't conceive of how uh, anybody can see this as a step towards peace. Unfortunately, it's a step in the wrong direction. Uh, what we need to be doing is figuring out how these two parties can come to an agreement on these sensitive issues, not trying to weigh in with our own point of view uh, on behalf of one of the parties. In addition to what we've already seen from the Palestinians so far, how else would you expect the Palestinians to respond to this? Well, I hope that uh, the response will remain uh, nonviolent, uh, that it will remain uh, in the course of diplomacy and not go to the streets. But, uh, you know, in 2000, uh, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon took a uh, walk up to the top of the Temple Mount at uh, a moment when the negotiations between the parties had broken down and sparked the Second Intifada, which lasted for years and cost thousands of lives. Uh, these kinds of issues have consequences, these kinds of moves. So what I hope does not happen uh, is that we move down the road towards violence, but I think that that uh, is a very real possibility. And we saw the State Department today warn its own employees and their families not to go to school tomorrow uh, over this. That's how concerned they are about the possibility. The U.N. Secretary General has criticized this move, and on Wednesday he said, I want to make it clear there's no alternative to the two-state solution. There is no plan B. What are your thoughts on that? Is a two-state solution still a possibility, you think? Well, there's only two options. One is that you have a solution to this conflict, and the other is that the conflict goes on forever. Uh, those are the only two possibilities. And the only way you resolve this conflict is that both sides have to have a sovereign state of their own in the land that was mandatory Palestine in 1947 when everybody started uh, trying to figure out how to resolve this in the first place. And so there have to be two states for two people or else the two people are just going to continue fighting uh, for eternity. And so that's the only solution. Uh, without two states, you have the problem. As you know, the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has been working for months to restart talks between Israelis and Palestinians. What do you think the president's speech means for Kushner's efforts? Well, it's a, I think it is a serious blow to the efforts of the administration, which are well-intentioned. The idea of uh, reaching the ultimate deal, as the president has called it, is an aspiration that uh, 
Jews and Muslims and Christians and Arabs and Palestinians have all said that they would like to achieve, uh, that we would like to see a resolution of this conflict. And the president devoted uh, his son-in-law's efforts and put together a team of trusted advisors to try to pursue this. Uh, this is a, uh, a real blow uh, to that process and to the role of the United States in the long term diplomatically. All right, Jeremy Benami. Jeremy, thanks very much for your time.